So uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming here today. Uh, today we'll be presenting our senior design presentation, which is an automated uh, cheese roll production machine. Um, we are stage one. Our faculty advisor is uh, Dr. Tosuno. So uh, before we start our presentation, let me just go over a few, uh, to uh, go about the history of this company. As you know, this company is funding our, our, uh, our project. Mr. Saperstein is here today with us. Thank you for being here. I want to thank you for giving us the opportunity uh, for working with your company. Uh, I have some brochures of different products that this company is making. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Tosman can just pass it around. We're interested in uh, cheese stick product, which is in the top right corner of the brochure. So this company was uh, founded about 18 years ago by David Alfandri. Um, it started just as a bakery, normal bakery. Uh, after that, they came up with an idea that they can um, make the products before they cook it. They cook it. They just put it in the freezer and sell it to people, so they can cook it at home and eat it uh, fresh anytime that they want. Once the, that idea had a huge success, they decided to grow up their business and um, and they started distributing their, their, their products to a, a lot of big names such as 7-Eleven, Walmart, Whole Foods in six different states. Uh, as well, they exported to Puerto Rico and, uh, and Panama. So uh, we divided this project into two stages. So uh, our team is working on stage one. There's another team that's working on stage two. So uh, stage one is basically uh, flatten uh, a slab of dough into a certain thickness and cut it into uh, uh, strips and then just transfer it to uh, the other stage. Stage two will receive these strips, put cheese on uh, top and, and the bottom and then roll it to, to, to form uh, cheese sticks. Now we're gonna go in details about stage one. So our job is to create a machine to automate this production. Um, our machine in stage one has to perform uh, different tasks such as um, we're gonna accept a slab of dough that has like 26 inches by 18 with uh, one and a half inch in thickness. Put it through rolling process, reduce the thickness into one and eighth uh, of inch, then cut it uh, to a strips that has like seven and a half inches to by, by two. Uh, and then just transfer that to uh, stage two using a conveyor belt. I have a video here showing exactly what our machine has to perform. Uh, let me just, just play it. So uh, this is the slab of dough. We're basically given this uh, to begin with. Here they just cut in a piece just to show us the process. They have a, a shearer machine, but it's not really practical because they do it several times. Sometimes it takes like 18 passes to reduce the thickness. And they do that manually, reducing the thickness. And the machine doesn't give one eighth of an inch in thickness, so they, do, uh, they, they uh, keep doing it manually. At the meantime, um, they dust it with flour so it doesn't stick. And this is uh, how they cut it into strips. They go lengthwise and uh, widewise. Okay, point rubber. idea was to use their current dough sheeter. Uh, we were going to modify it, uh, maybe by applying some electronic uh, electronic uh, actuators to adjust the dough and the forward and reverse drive, uh, as well as incorporate a dusting pan, like a sifter, over it with a rotating unbalanced maker to create the vibration that will dust it as the dough goes back and forth multiple times, and then give it an addition at the end that, that cuts as it comes up and onto the next stage. Third design two was something similar. Uh, incorporates a slightly smaller footprint. It's gonna be similar, but we're gonna use a horizontal multi-stage of rolling reduction, one after another, hopefully to reduce it uh, to the eighth inch through one single pass, also with the sifters on top for to combat adhesion and the cutters at the end. Uh, our third alternative design was using gravity to feed the 
to go through to help speed it through vertical design and rolling. Uh, individual motors per stage for fine tuning uh, uh, rotational velocity per stage. A cutter at the end and a conveyor belt that, that uh, transfers the material through. Uh, a collection panel at the bottom where we can use a vacuum pump to create like a whirlwind of dough within encapsulated an encapsulated machine. So this is a, a table showing comparison between the three designs. Floor space is actually a very large requirement uh, for the first design, and we're going to cut. We plan on cutting down on that because there's not a, a lot of space in the warehouse. Uh, rolling speed, adjustability, flower application, thickness, adjustability, ease of use, and amongst others, we took them all into account. We're going to we're going to go with design three, vertical. Well, um, project objectives. One of our main pro uh, objectives is to automate this cheese stick production. How? Well, we're going to increase the production from 11,000 per week to 11,000 per day. Also, uh, is to reduce the labor cost by 80%. How are we going to do this? Well, actually, by yet to go company, they have five people working from stage one, from the very beginning, stage one to stage two, to produce these uh, cheese dough sticks. So we're going to keep just one operator operating the machine, as well as following all these steps. That's how we're going to reduce the labor cost by 80%. We know that we're going to face some challenges during the process of building our machine. One of them is going to be obtaining that one eight inch thick load sheet in one single rolling pass. Also, overcoming those patient to rollers. There are some related standards that we're going to follow in. We have divided into two sections, good safety standards and compiled label uh, level standards. Uh, we did some research and we know that 48 million people, one out of six Americans, uh, get sick, 128 are hospitalized, and 3,000 of them die every year from food Foodborne diseases. That's why we have to follow some of these standards. Like the first one, that it's uh, related to safety machinery lubricants with accidental product contact and hygiene requirements. Um, for the second one, uh, are related to specified requirements for a food safety management. And if the A food code 2009 is a model for safeguarding the public health. The last two, ISO 2015 and the slash one, are the specified functional requirements and design principles for the emergency staff control, uh, independent from the type of energy used. Finally, the components level standards have a gearing procedure that we're gonna follow in order to be for gear, as well as tin can bearing when we're picking our bearings, as well as we're gonna follow the ASME standards. Level components. Um, graphic card symbols are very important when uh, because they give us very good information when reading words are not available. So that's why we're going to use international recognized symbols such as hazards and warnings, also universal controls and operations. Um, also, we'll be using SI units and US customary units, as well as we're gonna uh, have the instruction manual in English and Spanish. And finally, energy efficiency. Um, as we can see, we have the project management from January to April. We have followed the project formulation, which is survey design research, and some CAD drawings. From today to August, we're going to finish with the CAD drawings and simulations in order to do the manufacturing optimization and testing our, testing our final design. Thank you. Any questions? Walk me through the path that, that the dough is going to go on your machine. Okay, so and you could probably just walk over here and just look at your machine. Yeah. 
point two on your machine. So how's the donut go? So the donut will go through here. Okay. And then um, by just using gravity, it's going to go through uh, because if there are motors right here. They will be, ro they will be rotating, uh, and then it will go straight down. The, the, there's going to be a slot, predetermined size slot, at the bottom of the funnel, at the, at the feed. So they can't feed anything bigger. We're going to have a lot of testing done, so make sure it doesn't grow too, too far apart or uh, too long, and uh, so it doesn't bind up in the size of the machine. This is not a, uh, an exact model. It's a very simple, uh, it's an idea of what we're going to be doing. So your rollers will be a little wider at the top? And no, they won't. Well, we're going to incorporate, or more than likely, going to space out the frame a bit away from the roller, incorporate a cutter on the ends of each roller. So that way, if the, when the material hits a certain stage where it gets too wide, it trims it. And what we have as an output is a perfect end cut, and then the strips will fall down to the bottom for, for recycling. But each of the rolls will have the same gap? No, they'll have separate gaps. They'll have different gaps. We'll, we'll step it down maybe half thickness initially, maybe down to a three quarter, then down to about a three eighth, and then maybe an eighth. We have, that's one of those things that we have to build something that's adjustable, and we're going to have to test to see how the dough works in conjunction with yeah, it. Your surface area is growing. Yeah. And so, you know, something that was this long at this thickness is going to be substantially longer and uh, at much thinner. Right. And what are you? You know, is the distance between the rollers adequate? Is there enough uh, uh, capacity, capacitance in the system to be to compensate for the volume increase? The only reason for using four individual motors at this stage is because we need to be able to find and adjust the velocities of each stage. We're going to try. We're going to have each stage accelerated just slightly uh, more than the previous in, in order to to have give it a slight pull to try to like narrow it, narrow the material back down instead of just pull width. It'll pull slightly. As well as, um, yeah, we can adjust each one individually. And then, like I said, as far as width, the feet is more than likely going to have to be narrower than the full width of the roller initially because we have nothing pulling on the first stage. So what we're going to have is we're going to have a growth uh, in width. So in order to do that, we're going to make sure we specify the size of the of the material that needs to be that needs to be fed in. When they cut it, they need to cut it within a certain size. And if it doesn't fit in the slot, then it's not within the certain constraints that it needs to be. Okay. And then last question I had was tied to going from 11K a week to 11K in a day. Have you done any calculations to figure out if that's even feasible? Yeah, it is. Um, not really calculations, but um, the, the, the machine will be operated eight hours a day. Uh, it, it, it is feasible. Okay. It's, it's got, all that depends on okay. stage two. They run out. five day shift or they run six, six, six days. Six. And it's it's really it's really going to be left up to how fast they can produce the dough. Okay, so. okay, thank you. So it's understandable if you have a first stage that's just a funnel, sort of like keeping this material pulling down. Any plans of you where you have your dough cut already prior to entering the machine, you have just a blob of dough coming in all the way through. Because it'll be difficult for them to actually flow perfectly into those rollers. Well, Once it gets to the if, rollers, it's okay. If you watch the video, they already have them preformed into big rectangular slabs, and then they cut and they cut into a certain section of it. So it's it's gonna they are ready as it is. When they start, they're starting with a rectangular slab of dough. It's not just a ball. So they're gonna have this dough that they already have set, and they're gonna cut it into a certain within a certain size, and they're gonna feed it. As far as the height of the portion of the FBI, which is the foreborn illness issue concerning the low and yeast buildup into the machine itself, mm -hmm. what have you thought of at this stage uh, in the sense of uh, the equipment itself? How easy will it be to disassemble, reassemble again for cleanup, daily operation, and so forth? Uh, fine details are still up in the air. As soon as we get into the into the, into the small details, we'll figure all that out. But the gear train will all be it will be encased in a box, so it's not exposed to, uh, to the food. As well as none of this is actually going to have oil in it. You know, maybe a, a small amount of just lubricant on on between. Uh, if there's a chain there, the, well, a chain they're going to be there. Sprockets, maybe a little bit of fine oil, but everything's going to be encased. The entire. Uh, rolling surface is going to be enclosed as well. The only thing that's going to end up at the end is going to be a small slot to spit out the, the actual strips at the end. Uh, as far as ease, uh, one of the main things I was, I was think, we were thinking about doing was making a bearing support for each stage of roller. So it's going to be, it's going to take all the load 
from the separation of the two rollers from trying to compress the dope. Uh, and it's all going to be, uh, it's going to hold the two rollers and the motor together. And then as far as, there are going to be slots in the frame where you can slip them in as pairs and pin them in. So all, those, all the load will be supported by the, by the supports. The frame is just there to hold them in place, stacked to a certain distance apart. So hopefully you'll just be able to take a panel off and pull each pair of rollers out as a unit, clean and slip them back in with a quick pin. I have a question. Yes. During our conversations through the months um, and during the process, you guys noticed that at some point we have to spray the dough with water. And I haven't heard where you guys are planning to do that. That will be part of stage two's process uh -huh. because they're going to be applying the cheese, so they will be spraying the water before applying the cheese. Yeah, yeah, because that's a very, very, very important component of what's going to happen right. with the We're, dough. Our part's going to take care of the flour application to, to, to combat adhesion to the rollers. So what I'm, um, I'm asking you is, second stage? Next yeah. team. Second stage. Yeah. Uh, next, next team will tell you how to spray. That's <laughs> all right. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. So where are you guys going to be come December? I'm, I'm, you know, uh, are you going to have this built and tested? Yes. Uh, Hopefully by the end of the summer we're going to have a working prototype. We're going to work all summer long on this, and by the time we start fall, it'll be a working prototype. Now, we're, one thing we aren't big believers in data. <laughs> so when you make this thing, make sure you get us some good data to demonstrate the performance. Right? Okay. The, the one thing we decided to go with a full size scale of this model because it's going to be hard considering we don't know we're not experts on dough, and we don't know how the dough is going to react on a smaller scale. Uh, we decided to go full size. The cost difference is not going to be great once you're building something that's you know, full size roller, full size motor, full size frame, but just making maybe four strips wide versus 12 strips wide. It's not a big difference in cost, so we might as well just do a full size, uh, full sc a size scale model. Uh, and that way, when the only thing we're going to cut down on is actual material selection initially, because this is a, this is going to be a working prototype. Finals will will specify certain steels that are, are required by standards. Right now, we'll keep the cost down with some, some more mild steels with uh, with fine finishes on the rollers and whatnot. And um, and the final design will will specify exactly what what materials to use. Now, the difference, the good thing is that once it's time to give them a final design with final materials, the only thing we have to change as far as calculations are going to be the material properties. Because we're using full size scale, the equations and whatnot for, for stress and whatnot will be the same. We just have to plug in the different material properties. Make it easier instead of you know starting with like a small scale where bending moments and shears and all that changes. So because you're automating a process what steps have you taken to ensure that the knowledge currently in the mechanical, in these our manual processes, is being translated into your automated process? Because there's a there's an art, there's a specialization that comes with a manual process, and anytime you automate that, you need to try and do everything you can to capture that. So, what are you guys doing? Um, are you working with the current operators? I mean, how, what steps are you taking to try and capture that? I'm not really sure. I just I know we we've been multiple times and seen them put uh, put the uh, you know gone through the steps. And as far as our part is concerned, there's not really much you can do as far as you need to end up with a strip of certain size. So it's not there's not really there's multiple ways of doing it, but at the end of the day, the process is still going to be the same. They're they're in charge of making sure that their dough has a certain moisture content in it, which is going to give you quality of the final product, the texture that they want. Um, all we're doing is outputting a strip of a certain size, a certain uh, the certain dimensions, and passing on to the, to the next stage. And I guess my last question is on the safety side. What are you going to do to ensure that there's no pinch points, no, no ability operators to get their fingers into this system um, to, to ensure that we don't lose any fingers? Everything will be uh, will be completely covered in panels. Like I said, this is not this is not uh, this is not an exact final prototype uh, design. It's just showing you an idea of what we're going to do. Everything's going to be completely covered, uh, gear case separately, all covered in sheet in sheet metal, and the actual outside will be all covered. So you will not have access to any of the rollers. And as far as the top slot, 
it's going to be kind of hard to slip your hand, but even if you do, there's going to be a spring-loaded flap in there in, in order. So once you once the dough is fed all the way through, it closes to heat contain our, our flour from, you know, our whirlwind of flour inside the machine from coming it back up. And the only thing open you're going to have really is going to be that slot, and then there's going to be a really fine slot just thick enough for the, for the, for the strips to come out, which is not going to be big enough for six figures in. I have another one. Sure. Going back to his question, because that's a very important subject to touch, and is the cleaning process of the rollers. They have to be, I mean, it's going to have to be done daily. You know that. So how easy will it be to assemble and disassemble the rollers? It should be fairly simple. Very simple. Yeah, uh, like I said, we're going to incorporate a design where you can slip out each pair of rollers all together by pulling a pin or just taking out a bolt. It should a whole pair. Each pair should come out individually with the bearing supports attached to it. You should be able to access every nook and cranny in there. And if you really want to go as far as taking the bearing supports off the rollers and getting on there, it, you can do that as well. So it's going to be. It might be. A, it'd be a little more time consuming, but yeah, getting getting it broken down would be simple. We'll make sure that the. We thought about another idea that we can just put up glass door here so you can watch the process and then you can just open it and clean it as well. We had that idea as well. Right. But then again you get the pinch point problem because if it's running and someone opens up that door the system needs to shut itself down. Yeah. Uh, we're going to follow Not some of the standards actually for, for uh, operating machine standards. We can, we can, try, we can incorporate a, a safety system. Sure. We can incorporate sensors on have you seen how they currently clean it with what kind of detergents? Mm, actually not. That's no, important when working with metals because then you have the corrosion problem that we have in the line. So you have to make sure to look out for that. Right. There, there, uh, we have standards to follow, so they have certain 